So we left off talking about what a derivative is, right? Putting that in context of limits. Actually, you can even scroll back up, right? We talked about what a derivative is. We said that we can write about a derivative in terms of limits. And we had notation for that, right? We used f prime or dy by dx to talk about the limit of uh, the derivative, rather, of something. So we want to explore this concept a little bit more, and this is where we start to talk about differentiability. And our theorem is to say that if x is if f of x is differentiable at um, some number c, then it's also continuous at that point. Right? If I can take the derivative of a function, then it's also continuous. Why? Right. Well, the reason for that is that connection between derivatives and the limits. Right. If um, f of x, so if f prime of x exists, so does the limit at that number. And if the limit exists, then the function is continuous. So there's our connection between the derivative and limits, is through continuity. Our summary of this is to say that differentiability implies continuity. If I can derive it, then it's continuous. The reverse is not always true, right? Continuity does not always imply differentiability, and we want to start this by exploring why that's the case. Um, so if I consider a function like the absolute value of x, especially if I consider what happens around x equal to 0. So let's get this graph drawn first. So let me just get some axes and then get my graph. So we know that here is roughly the absolute value of x. And I want to concern myself with what happens around 0. So, well, what happens? The limit as x approaches 0 of this function, let's figure it out. I look from both directions. I'm going to look from the left. I'm coming from the left. Looks like my y value also approaches zero. As I come from the right, my function value approaches zero. So I can say that the limit of the whole function at zero is zero. Great, the limit exists. So this tells me that the function is continuous at zero. But what about the derivative, right? Does continuity imply differentiability? If something is continuous, can I take its derivative? Let's see what happens. So I'm going to consider the derivative of this function. So I'm actually going to start by erasing my function altogether here just so I have some room. Well, the derivative of my function is going to look like this. If I can draw with a straight line, that'd be helpful. We've got this right here. And we're going to assume that this is negative 1 and positive 1. Well, what about the limit of the derivative? Well, from the left, this function is approaching negative 1, so we would say that the limit from the left is negative 1. And the limit from the right Moving from the right, it looks like I'm approaching positive 1. So these are not equal to each other, so therefore the limit overall does not exist. Well, that would mean then that the function has no derivative of 0. Right, so we would say that f of x is not differentiable at 0. And there's kind of our proof. Right, calculus does, sorry, continuity does not always imply differentiability. And here's our example why. What happens in our textbook is that they let you uh, just continue to use the limit definition of the derivative um, for the whole rest of the section. I want to speed up the process because it makes calculus look a lot more difficult than it really is. So kind of our hack for this section 
is something called the power rule, which we're actually going to talk about in more detail in the next section. Um, but all you got to know is that if f of x um, is x to some power, then its derivative is to take the power, move it in front as a coefficient, and then lower the power by 1. So for example, if f of x was x cubed, the derivative of that is to bring the power down front and lower it by 1. The other thing that's helpful is that you can derive each term individually. We're going to talk about what this means and write it more formally in the next section. But you should also know that you can go term by term with the derivative. We don't spend a lot of time on differentiability and continuity. We just use it to tie the two topics together, just like we did. Um, so we're going to move on to more interesting and um, more important stuff, and that's uh, tangent lines and normal lines. So let's start with the tangent line. So given a function, I've got this 2 minus 3x squared. I want to find the equation of the line tangent to the function at x equals 1. So let's start with a visual, just a loose sketch here. Get some axes again. 2 minus 3x squared is going to maybe roughly look like this. And I want the equation of the line tangent to f of x at x equals 1. So maybe this is where x equals 1 sits. Actually, I'm going to move that up higher just so it's a little bit easier for me to draw. Maybe this is where x equals 1 sits. And there is the equation of my tangent line. The key is that this is a line. So eventually that means I want something in the form mx plus b. I want slope-intercept form. The way to do this surefire every time is to start with point slope form. We're going to start with point slope form and actually transform this into slope intercept form. It makes our work a lot easier, it's more streamlined, um, and all the work is laid out right in front of us. All right, well, let's consider the pieces. Let's consider the parts. We know my y just my normal y and just my normal x are going to stay the way they are because I need them to show up over here in my slope-intercept form. So we're going to leave those alone. We're not going to touch those. Next thing I notice I need is some kind of a point, x1, y1. Well, the question, of course, is can I figure that out? Do I have it? Well, I have an x, and I can definitely find a y. So if x is 1, then y is just f of 1 which is negative 1. Right? I did that just substituting into the original equation. Great, so I've got those pieces. The last piece I need, the most important piece here, is the slope. Do I know anything about the slope right now? Not explicitly. Do I have enough information to figure it out? Yes, I do. Remember that I said in the last video that slope and derivative are not totally synonyms, but they're pretty darn close. In these problems, anytime I see slope in an equation like this, I can usually fall back on the derivative of the function. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So to find the slope, I'm going to find the derivative of the function and then figure out what that is when x is 1. So let's do that. So the derivative of this function, well, one thing also that we'll also talk about more in the next section that we are kind of previewing here is that the derivative of a constant is 0, right? If I were to think about a constant Slope, I'll just do it on this set of axes real quick. Here's my constant graph. What's the slope of that? Zero. So, zero. And then negative three times, we'll use my power rule. Drop the exponent and lower it by one. So I have 2x to the first, which is 2x. So my derivative is negative 6x. When x is one, 
my slope is negative six. Well, this is great. Now I've got all the pieces I need. I can just plug it right in, right? Y minus negative one is negative six. X minus one. So I'll get negative six X plus six. So plus five. And right there is the equation of my tangent line. That's all that is. So that's all we're looking at here. So just to recap, right, I want to start always with point slope form, figure out all the information that I have and figure out all the information that I need. So I'm given a point, oh, I'm given an x coordinate, I can find a y coordinate. So I've got my x1 and y1. I'm not given anything about my slope explicitly, but I have enough information to find it uh, to find it out, to figure it out, and that's by deriving the function and plugging in that x value, which is exactly what I did there, to get negative six. Plug in everything you have, turn it into slope-intercept form, and you're good to go. This next problem is going to work very similarly, but we have a slightly different um, definition, slightly different part of the graph that I'm going to be concerned with and I want to start just by copying my graph over so I can mark it up. So we have tangents, we also have something called a normal um, and if you've taken any physics already or if you've discussed this in physics already, think about a normal force, right? A normal force is perpendicular um, to the force being applied and so likewise the normal line uh, is perpendicular to the tangent line at the same exact point that the tangent line touches the graph of the function. Okay, so this is kind of my application to physics. Very briefly. So in my graph that I just copied down here, the equation of the normal, the normal line is gonna come right off of that same point and just be perpendicular to the line, uh, to the tangent line. Cool. So Let's stick with the same function that I had before. Let's copy that over. Oops. Minus 3x squared. And let's find the equation of the normal line this time at x equal to 1. So again, I'm looking for a line. So I'm going to start with point slope form. What do I know? I have an x, I don't have a y, so just as before, let's say that if x is 1, y is just f of 1, which we said was negative 1. Now for my slope, remember that the normal line is perpendicular to the tangent line. So I'm actually going to rewrite this, and I'm going to say that the slope of the normal line is negative one over the slope of the tangent line. Remember that two lines are perpendicular if their slopes are opposites and reciprocals, and that's where this is coming from right here. All right, so this is opposite and reciprocal. Cool, well, I'll save us the time here. I've already figured out the slope of the tangent line that was up here. So this means then the slope of the normal line is positive one sixth, opposite and reciprocal. So now I've got all the pieces I need, I can plug in. Uh, whoops, so y plus one equals one sixth, x minus one. And simplify this all the way down of x minus one, uh, sorry, one sixth x minus one sixth, and minus seven over six, and this would be the equation of our normal line, right, perpendicular to the tangent. 